This amp is almost 30 years old. Looks like it's brand spanking new. Let's take a trip back to 1992 in the car audio and electronics directory. This happens to be the first year that kicker audio amplifiers show up here. See, there's four different models, including the 200SI, which shows up as $599 list price. Equivalent terms for today's price, that's $1,133, pretty expensive. Then again, in 1994, the Kicker 200SI shows up in the new machine section of the same car audio and electronics directory, which we show the cover here. And they also had an ad in this magazine, which talks a lot about the different modules for these amplifiers, as that was a huge selling point. And in 1994, they also have four different models, but now the 200SI is $639, and that's equivalent to $1,142 in today's money. In this video, I'm going to show you guys a recent amplifier that I got, and we're going to talk more about it, so stay tuned. Yo, my homies, it is a good day, and why is it a good day? We have a package to open. Let me grab my super sharp knife. Let's cut into it and see what is in the package from our friends at eBay. It's not really our friends at eBay. It's not even a friend from eBay because I don't know who I bought this from. You big dummy! Let's see what in the heck it is. Well, first off, I can say they packed it excellently. Just look at this. Oh, with such care. I love it when people take care of stuff. Oh, look, oh, look at this. And we have a nice little note on here. Thank you so much, Derek. Your time and kind support means a lot to me. Best wishes now and always. Love, Jessica, heart Jessica. I don't know who Jessica is, but my wife better not be reading this or she's going to be upset. Uh... Let me find my knife. Where'd I put it? Big dummy. This thing looks like almost new. Is it new? I, I, I do new. But Jessica, you did a bang up job on the packing. I fully approve. Not sure my wife approves of your note, but that's okay. Let's see. Ooh. Looky there, manual. We get a free kicker decal. I wonder if they'll still send that. Have to ask Kip. Oh yes, we have some upselling here. Unlock the true potential of your amplifier. Buy a module. And what is this? A mounting template. What you know about that? Here is the amp. Oh, so nicely packed. This thing looks like minty fresh. Let's see, can we even get it out of here? Well, let's take this off. Oh, we got more packing. Oh, Jessica, you did this right. So that's how you do it. You just have to not be a big dummy and just lift this up. That thing is like mint. Now, I don't think it's supposed to have two different size fuses in it, but wow. Made in the USA. It may have been used before, but it looks really, really super sharp. It was sold for parts to repair, so <laughs> it actually may not work. But I saw the condition and saw it came in the box and everything. I'm like, dude, look at that. That is some beauty right there. So I just got out the manual and it looks like it's supposed to have two 30 amp fuses. So not sure what's up with the 25 and 30 amp unless they blew a fuse and didn't have an extra 30 amp. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'll replace that so they match, but wow, this thing is like mint, perfect, like brand new. So awesome. And it has a blank module. You guys who haven't seen my other videos of these particular amps, let's see if I can get it out. I'm supposed to put something in there to push it. Let me get a screwdriver. So right in here, there's a catch, a release. Push that in. You have to squeeze and pull the module. It's hard for me to do this with one hand. Let me set it down here. Tilt the camera a little bit so you guys can see. There we go. Big dummy to the rescue. This thing is in there tight. I don't think it's ever been pulled out. Stillwater Designs input output module for kicker SI amps this side up. It won't it only goes in one way. Wow, this thing is like super super mint. I'm still blown away. Let's see if I can get it down the right channel here to get it back together. There we go. Super tight. Slide it back in very, very carefully. There we go. And we'll snap. It's back in. Still blown away by how mint this thing is. Just showing off the accessories again. Here is the registration warranty card. Stillwater Designs P.O. Box 459. I'll have to ask them if they still use that P.O. Box. There is the manual. This is from 1990, 1994 there. I think these first came out in 92. Here's the modules. You had, at the time of this one, there were five different modules. Active EQ. Active tweeter crossover, the active center channel rear, rear fill, the active mid-range crossover, and the active subwoofer crossover. And there also was a gain control, I believe, even on the first gen of these amps. And check this out. Even came with a mounting template. Everything is in inches, no millimeters here. Cut along these dotted lines. That is really cool. So let's take out this 25 amp fuse here. Twenty-five. Trying to see if I can find one that matches close to the one that's in there, because I hate to have two different color fuses. I think this one matches. So let's just Let's just take the old pliers, carefully place it back inside the amplifier, and we'll push it in by hand. There we go. 30 and 30. That's what it's supposed to be. 60 amps worth of fusing for a 200 watt amplifier. This amp is almost 30 years old. Looks like it's brand spanking new. Look at that exterior. 200 SI. 200 is the watts. SI. Steve Irby. This little panel right here comes off. And it shows you what each of the Inputs and outputs and stuff are. There's the left, right input, power protect, gain, module socket, right output, left output. There are the speaker outputs and then the remote ground and 12 volt. If I remember correctly, this probably uses eight gauge. Two 30 amp fuses. There's the RCAs, the gain module. 
RCA out, speaker outputs, and power ground and remote, and those are 8 gauge. Just blown away, really blown away at how this thing looks. Looks absolutely brand new. Now, I do not know if it works or not. It was sold as parts or repair, which I'm hoping means that the person that sold it didn't know how to hook it up. But I guess we'll just have to try it and see if it works. But even if it doesn't, I'll send it to Kicker and get it repaired because having the box, having everything with it, to me, this right here is like a showcase piece. So, so awesome. All right, well, I'll uh, try to get it hooked up so we can see how it works, see if it does work. And if it does, I'll amp dyno test it. If it doesn't, I'll have to send it off to get it fixed. So the next segment will either be me uh, upset or me very happy. So let's find out. Okay, friends, we have the amp hooked up. You can see the RCAs are here. We have one speaker hooked up. We have the remote, according to the little guide here. Remote, ground, and 12 volt. Remote, ground, and then 12 volt. And we always use the good old test light <clears throat> to charge up the caps. So we put this on the negative terminal and hook our negative terminal up to our battery source. And we got the light to come on and the light went out. If your light stays on, on your test light, that means that you're pulling excess current and it's probably gonna mess something up. So that's a good way to test out to make sure your amp is okay. In this case, it charged up the caps and then it looked like it was good. So here we go, let's turn it on. Looks like we have red light there. And are we playing? Oh, we're not playing. So let's see if we hear it. Oh yeah. She is working with the funky music. See how this is red? This is the power, power LED. If it comes on yellow, that's protect right here. Those are really funky because all the light doesn't really make it up those channels. <laughs> So it's really, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of bright when you look at it this way. Sorry, I'll pause that so you can hear me over that. But yeah, you can see it's red, which is odd. I don't know why people use red for power and not green. To me, red means bad, <laughs> but it works. Oh, I need to try the other channel. Hold on. Let's try the other channel. Oh yeah, let's try it bridged. If I can get in there. It's just not making a good connection. We screw this down. She's bumping. So awesome. So awesome. There you go, now we've determined the amplifier works. Let's fire up the good old SMD DeMore Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can test out this amp. Before we do that, make sure you smash the thumbs up. Check the link in the video description, pick up some Wilson Audio merch. Let's move on to the amp. Turn it on, there's that red light. Yes, you can see it, right beside the 200 SI. Four ohms in the two channel mode. It's rated 100 watts by two at 12 volts. Here we go, let's see what we get. There you go, 116 and 108, right at 14 volts. Easily does the rated power. The certified test of 1% THD. Let's reset the dyno and try it uncertified up to the clipping point. Looks like channel one is just a little bit stronger, but you'd never notice that. 116 and 108, beyond its rated power, of course. Now let's try the dynamic burst. Now, one thing you will notice is this amplifier has a regulated power supply, so we're not getting big numbers here on dynamic. 116 and 108. What about that efficiency? This old school class AB amp is not going to be very good. 56% at 4 ohms, so 
Don't expect the class D efficiency here. Let's try two ohms. It's rated 170 by two at 12 volts. First up, certified test, 1% THD. There you go. Right at 200 watts per channel at 13.7, easily exceeding the rated specs. Uncertified. Again, over 200 watts, 212, 204 at 13.6 volts. Dynamic test again, the 40 hertz track. Again, all the tests I'm doing here are 40 hertz, not one kilohertz, just so you know. 218 and 209 at 13 and a half volts. But what about that efficiency at two ohms? Expected to be bad. Yep, 50%. Class AB for you. That's why they got so hot. Now let's try the amplifier bridged four ohms. It's rated 340 watts. See what we get. It's counting up. The voltage is dropping a little bit more. But yeah, 411 at 14 at 13.48 so 13 and a half volts we're still getting well above the rated power uncertified up to clipping 437 nice 13.3 and then dynamic let's see what kind of power we get dynamically the regulation here is kicking in still over 400 watts 417 13.34 and what about that bridge mono 4 ohm efficiency 52 percent again about what we expect what about the results yeah i'd say it's impressive <laughs> now you pretty much just saw all the tests but you can pause this if you like to see each one individually but yeah the amp as old as it is still did its rated power very impressive now for the do it bump dose section we're going to try it in try mode what's try mode all about let's find out here we have this Kicker 200SI amplifier hooked up to what many of you may not have ever seen before. This is called a tri-mode crossover. And this one specifically is a Phoenix Gold XV4, I think is the model number. It takes in left and right here from the amplifier. So use both left and right channels. Goes in has a coil here for the low pass, has the caps for the high pass. Subwoofer comes off of this channel and the mids and highs are here. So left and right and subwoofer. So this is what they call tri-mode, which enables you to take two channels and make it into three. So we have one going to the $6 Gately Audio subwoofer not six dollars uh, anyway yeah so we got that on the sub and then we have the elac debut uh b2 6.5s on the uh, mid and high channel so let's try it out and see how it sounds see what you guys think what do you think let's let's try it out here we go i'm going to apologize in advance for the music type I don't have a whole lot to choose from here, so YouTube safe. What you guys thought but i thought that was really really cool to see this 26 year old amplifier doing the tri mode running the gately audio subwoofer at four ohm running the elac speakers i think they're six ohm and it's warm but it's not you know overheated or anything and i was cranking it there for a while so great job kicker 200 ss almost brand new 
thanks to the eBay seller, said it was parts or repair, and turns out it works perfectly. So thanks as always, you guys, for watching. I always appreciate it. Make sure you check out my other videos. Hit the like button and subscribe if you like this content. Till next time, you know where Big D is. I'm out of here. So I just noticed something about the amp that some of you guys may have noticed without me even pointing it out. But if you remember on the last amp that I tested like this, the X50S, it had a full, <laughs> it had this panel right here was full and it hadn't been broken out. And here's the difference because you remember on the other one, it kind of hit the wires. See how it fits now and the wires actually come out. Some people mentioned they thought the wires were supposed to go under the bottom. Well, according to the manual, you are supposed to break out that piece, which is odd that they wouldn't just break it out for you. I don't, I don't know why. I'll ask my kicker contacts to let me know why they did it this way. But either way, this one, this is how it's designed to look. This amp is gray. And some of the pictures, some of them look white. I'm not sure if the X series of the first gen were actually white or if they were gray. I'll see if I can get some more information on that too.